Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. He is good. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You see your hand if you're grateful today. Anybody thankful? I am too. Song says, Oh, give thanks.
Good morning. Good morning, good morning, and happy Mother's Day. Happy, happy Mother's Day. As we come to celebrate the Lord in this house today, we're going to all remember the beautiful ladies that birthed us. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. I remember my mom and my beautiful wife. And I know all of you here can think about the, the beautiful ladies in your life who was there for you, who helped you and showed you and guided you on the way. As we come into this house today, we want to remember we're honoring God. We're developing Christians, we're connecting people, and we're loving everybody. Yes, sir, Reverend. Make sure we have that understood. We're going to honor God first. Amen? Yes. Yeah. We're going we to raise our hands and we're going to say hallelujah. We're going to say thank you, Lord. See, one thing I learned a long time ago. Yes, sir, Reverend. Yes, sir. They don't take a whole lot of people to worship God. Amen. <laughs> if you got a spirit of Lord in your life, yeah. it can take just one. And I want to make sure that I give God all that he deserves. Yes, sir. I want to make sure yes, that he knows that I honor him, I worship him, I love him. And I want us all to feel that in our hearts. Feel it so hard that you feel like you want to cry. You love him so much. Thank you, sir. Amen. Amen. Like you just feel it so, so in your soul, in your spirit, that it's nothing you can, he can, anybody can say to you to direct you away from him. The word today, I want to start our message out today and our word out today is, is patience. Yes, yes. Patience. We got to have patience with one another. Patience. Patience. Let's bow our heads and prepare for our, our service today. Father, we come in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask in your beautiful name that you you touch us. God, we ask that you watch over us. And God, as we come into this house of God today, as we come to worship you and to praise you and honor you, God, we want to let you know how much we love you. We love you. And God, we ask in the name of your son, Jesus, that allow your Holy Spirit to just come and move throughout this place today. The Spirit of the living God. Spirit of Oh, 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 oh,
Somebody does love the Lord today. You know, I was on my way to church this morning and I, and I got to the stop sign and I looked around and I saw some folks who were out of doors. I saw some folk who had, it looked like they were having a tough go of it. And sometimes God has a, a, has a way of getting your attention. I said, what about that fellow right there? I wonder what, what's on his mind. And I said, as good as God has been to me, I, I wonder what it would take. I don't know what he was going on. I don't know all about it, but I don't know what it would take to get him to be in a place of, of a shift. David, you know what I mean? I mean like a something different, Brother Bill, you know, not on the streets and struggling. And I know one thing that we can do, we can't solve every problem, but I know one thing we can do, we, we can love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Can y'all say amen to that? They all sin and come short of this glory to call, but but the least we could do is when we come up upon somebody that God has made, it's God's property, amen. We could, we could love our neighbor and look beyond one another's faults and see one another's needs. Love our neighbor as ourselves. And the same God that made you is the same God that made your neighbor out on the street today, the same one that is dealing with difficulty. God is worthy to be praised. I don't mean to bother you today, but can you just stand if you're able? And we're going to just sing together. Won't you stand if you're able? You don't know. Yeah. Yes, amen. Yeah. Amen. 
one of the things I like about God is God is, He hears our famous cry. The old folks say He answers by and by. So let's, let's call Him today. Uh, we're going to sing a little bit, and Reverend Davis, our beloved brother, is going to come and pray over us. Oh, oh, gentle say. That's an old song we can sing together. Hear yeah, my heart, hear yeah, my heart. We pray for our pastor this morning. We pray 
says, I know, I know, I know she would want me to be there with her on Sunday morning. Amen. And I'm glad for you all who have a smile because somebody that you love decided to come to church today with you. Uh, Kaden, come here, son. I want to see you up here for just a moment. We, we flexing today. I know. Thank you. Thank you. I saw Caden coming to church today, and I said, what a fine young man. Let's, uh, let's note that um, we are so blessed that we have Sunday school now. Come on, let's clap for that. That's wonderful. And uh, Sister Jean Wilson is offering leadership, and Sister Nicole, and Sister Cameron, and Sister Marcella are serving as teachers, and others of you might want to get involved. We're going to get some new curriculum. It's going to be wonderful. It's already nice. But I just wanted you all to see what, what uh, having a fine family results in. Can you say amen? amen. And so, Kate, I just want to interview you a little bit. Nice to see you. You feel comfortable up there? Mm -hmm. You look good. Thank you. So come stand right here, Kate. So, Kaden, uh, today is uh, Mother's Day, and uh, I want you to, to, to tell us uh, what it feels like to have a wonderful mother. Will you do that, please? Yeah. You could take your hands out your pocket and give them a little of that. Yeah, very good. All right. Let's clap for Kaden right now. Kaden, what does it mean to have a wonderful mother? Uh, it means a lot because there's there's a lot of people, like certain kids that go to my school who don't have a mother and they only have a father or vice versa. And for me, I just feel really blessed because my mom has done so much for me. Like she sent me to Costa Rica over spring break and then over summer I'm going to Spain and Portugal. And I'm just really grateful for that um, opportunity to travel the world. And she's also sacrificed a lot for me just in general. Cool, you came a great big hands for you, man. Church, say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I looked up and I saw Dr. Flora Cordette, and she on Mother's Day has a special tribute. Let's clap our hands for Dr. Flora Cordette. She's got to share something beautiful. She's got her family with her, too. 
wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. First, the song, now the poem. The poem, somebody's mother. The woman was old and ragged and gray and bent with the chills of the winter's day. The streets were wet with the recent snow. The woman's feet were aged and slow. She, she stood at the crossing and waited long, alone, uncared for amid the throng of human beings who passed her by, nor heeded the glance of her anxious eye. Oh, God. Down the street, with laughed and shouted, glad in the freedom at school, and out came the boys like a flock of sheep, held in the snow pile white and deep. They passed that woman so old and gray, hasted the children on their way, nor often a helping hand to her, so meek, so timid, afraid to stare. At least the horse feet should crowd her down in the slippery streets. At last came one of the merriest troops, the gayest laddies of all the groups. He paused beside her and whispered low, I'll help you across if you wish to go. Her aged hands on his strong young arms, he placed it in so, she placed it in so, without hurt or harm. He guided the trembling feet along, proud that his own were firm and strong. Then back again to his friends he went, his young heart happy, well content. She's somebody's mother, boys, you know. For oh, she's so old and poor and slow. And I hope a fellow will lend a hand to help my mother, you understand. If ever she's old and poor and gray, and her own dear boy is far away. And somebody's mother bowed low her head. And in her home, the prayer she said that night was, God, be kind to the noble boy who's somebody's son and pride and joy. Thank you. Wasn't that something? Dr. Floridette is a bad sister. She got a mind like a computer. Isn't that wonderful? I mentioned earlier that today is Mother's Day and we obviously are celebrating that and uh, we're celebrating moms and mothering in a beautiful way. I looked up and I saw something that made my heart smile. Uh, Ivy Coco, is that you over there? Come on up here for a minute, sis, and I want I want you to do something nice for me. Uh, Sister Lorraine Tucker had a birthday recently. And uh, Ivy, I want you, Coco, please, to uh, talk about mothering huh? and, and talk about Sister Mother May for us. Obviously, you could talk about your mom and your grandma, too. But I wanted to give her some flowers while she can. We do that, sis? So happy to see you. Let's clap our hands for Ivy Coco Maurice. Yeah. Good morning, church. Good morning. Oh, I love to hear that. Um, sometimes in life, we don't always have mothers that are our blood, and we have chosen mothers. People, the young man Caden said the word sacrifice. And when I think about who you guys refer to as Lorraine or Sister May, that simply is just my May May. Because I know that this woman has had to put everything she's had aside to raise my brother and I. My mom. Not over, over, for over 30 years, leaving Jamaica, leaving everything she has known to truly sacrifice life and create a new one. And every day goes by where I don't take the love that you've poured into my brother and I for granted. Mm. As you celebrate a new year of life, I want to stand here and remind you, Miss May, that you are loved, that you are valued, and that you are appreciated. And I wish you nothing but more life, more blessings, and like we say in Jamaica, happy Earth Strong. Beautiful, beautiful.
church say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sister Tucker, would you stand please? God bless you. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm Some days I can hardly move, but I thank him at least I'm still here. And to me, every day above the earth is a good day. So therefore, as long as we have breath one, let us give the Almighty thanks and praise and ask him as we go along to keep and strengthen us and protect us and keep us that and help us to serve him. And in truth, that when he shall call us home, you will be ready to say, Come, we have been waiting for you. What a blessing. Come on, let's clap our hands. Thank you, Peter. I love you. Let's see you. Let's see you. church amen. amen you saw some of the children leaving those of you who would like to be a part of the Sunday school again we're so grateful I want to thank God for some answered prayer and uh, we just believing that we're going to continue to uh, have wonderful activities for our young people you know it's been a long time coming but it's good and uh, blessings delayed are not necessarily blessings denied let me welcome all of you who have joined us. Uh, anybody join us for the very first time? I just want to call your name and celebrate your decision to be with somebody that you love. Anybody first timer today? All right, everybody's family. All right, everybody's family. That's good. We're all in the human family. Am I right about that? Amen. Uh -huh. That's good. That's good. I feel like I'm stalling. God is up to something. Somebody here is still bruised. Can't seem to shake it. Can't find it in your heart. Maybe God sent me by here today to say, that as God has forgiven you, won't you forgive somebody else? 
as God has forgiven you. We know our sins and our coming short. Our neighbor might not know, but we know. But since God has been marvelously gracious, if you're here today and there's a bruise, can't seem to shake it. Mad at God. Say you're mad at God. So I wasn't ready for my mother to go. Wasn't ready for my sister to go. Wasn't ready for my wife to go. Wasn't ready for grandma to go. But God is, I believe, sent me by here to say this. No matter what, you can trust God. Amen. Should be somebody that can bear witness no matter what. Huh? Cancer in your body? Trust God. Lost your job? Trust God. Got your heart broken? Trust God. Uncertain about what's going on in this whole crazy world? Trust God. Amen. I got a full day today. I'm going to ask for the music ministry to come. Then I'm going to share a little message today. And then we're going to have a celebration. <coughs> uh, sister Jean Wilson is so nice. By the way, Jean, stand up, sister. Y'all look at Jean Wilson. Guess what? She's celebrating 90 birthday this month. Give her a great big hand. Three mothers who hold it down for us every week here in this choir. Lord Daniels Ball, Valerie, and my sister These three mothers every Sunday come in here and without any fussing or there's no mess up here. We love each other and we have a good time. And I'm thankful for you guys. And I wish each happy mother's day. This morning I thought I would sing something that I thought Pastor was talking about mothers who have gone on who we missed. You know me, my mom, and my we miss my grandma, my great-grandmother. And I know someone here has a mother who they're celebrating with their mother figure, or someone who's gone on we can think about, who wanted us to say just this one thing if we came to church with them one Sunday. Come on, here. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. From the bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul.
Praise the Lord. Turn your Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 4. I thank all of you that are here today, all of you that are listening. Alongside Reverend Davis and Brother Ashley, I want to say Happy Mother's Day. Thank those of you that made it your business. Carve out some time to give honor to God. Reverend Davis said it before here at the Church of Christian Fellowship. We try to focus on four things all the time. We want to honor God. That includes the worship and trying to live a life that's pleasing to God. And we want to develop Christians. That's why every Sunday we're going to look into this holy book and see what God says by God's Spirit leading us. And then we want to connect people. Would you say the words connect people? I realize that most of us benefit from being in relationship, good to see you, Tony, uh, with one another. And if you can just decide, I'm going to have me a group of folks that I'm going to do life with, you know? <laughs> we will have highs and lows and blessings and challenges, but we're going to do life together. And that's why we can celebrate and do what we did for Lorraine today, Sister May, uh, Sister Tucker, uh, we could do that for Sister Jean. We could celebrate a fine young son and grandson and Caden. That's what we can get down together. Can you say amen? amen? I know some of you got fraternities and sororities and professional groups and home associations and, and folks that you just flex and hang with, but it's good to be looking around and saying, these folks are trying to honor God too, amen? Brother Bill, stand up, man. We missed you last week. You look good. Clap our hands for our brother. He's a miracle man. Yes, we love him around here. Good to see you, dear brother. Thank you so much. I also want to speak to another miracle man. I know it's Mother's Day, but that's what I feel like doing. Uh, Mr. Clifton Johnson, will you stand, please, sir? I want to tell you all something about him. Mr. Johnson is a miracle man for sure. When we met, we met through uh, Brother G. Bernard Brown. G. Bernard brought him by here. And Mr. Johnson was dealing with some health challenges at the time. It was really serious. And uh, we prayed together right up there in my office. How many years ago was that, Mr. Johnson? About 10 years ago. And um, you know, some of you are battling right now with some cells in your body that are diseased. And Mr. Johnson was going through it at the time, and the Lord see fit to bless him and lengthen out the threads of his life, amen. And then uh, we looked up and Mr. Johnson was experiencing some difficulties and his lovely family uh, saw to it that he got to the hospital when he had something going on with his brain. And uh, he had a brain surgery was a serious matter, wasn't it? But look at him. He, he mighty handsome too, Mr. Johnson. Let's clap our hands for God's blessing over our lives. Amen. I, I just feel like folks should have their flowers while they can smell them. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, please. Come on here. It's all right. Let's pray for her. Help yourself. So many good things going on in church today, and sometimes when you start calling out stuff, you, you make a mistake. You, well, it feels like you're making a mistake because, you know, you might forget something. But we, we're celebrating the goodness of God today. Am I right about it? Amen. So, thank you. 
2 Kings chapter 4. Not a wife of a member of the company of prophets cried to Elijah, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord, but a creditor, say the word creditor. creditor. Say it again, please. Creditor. A creditor has come to take my two children as, what's your Bible say? Lord have mercy. Elijah said to her, what, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? She answered, your servant has nothing. Say the word nothing. nothing. She said, uh, I, I, I have nothing in the house except a jar of oil. He said, go outside, borrow vessels from all your neighbors, empty vessels and not just a few. Uh, then go in and shut the door behind you, behind you and your children and start pouring <laughs> into all these vessels. And when each is full, set it aside. So she left him and shut the door behind her and her children. They kept bringing vessels to her. She kept pouring. <laughs> when the vessels were full, she said to her son, bring me another vessel. But he said to her, there are no more. Then the oil stopped flowing. She came and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debts. And you and your children. Say you and your children, please. You and your children can live on the rest. I want to share my little message today simply. I won't talk too long today, but I want to just say the message. That's my mom. Say it with me. That's my mom. Got to thinking about it on Mother's Day. Got to thinking about it a lot. It seems to me on Mother's Day there's a lot of ways to honor and celebrate mothers and motherhood. And some of us today have our mothers still with us. Some of us today have fond memories of mothers who have gone on. Some of us today have mixtures of memories and they're at the front of our brains on Mother's Day. But all of us in here have a woman that was a mother or a mother figure to us. And I, I want to just pause and thank God because God has given us an ability, Keith Lee, uh, to use these fine and fabulous brains of ours to have some memories of mom. Can you say amen? amen. Uh, that, that, that mother figure in your life. I want you to pay attention today to some details as you think about your mom, whether she's still here or she's gone on today. I got to thinking about how our mothers have a certain way of doing things. Am I right about this here? Huh? Yeah, you, you know that's my mom right there. In fact, uh, our mothers, my mother, she was a small woman, uh, but she was a big woman in a small body. And she comported herself in such a way that I am Helen Saunders McKnight and I'm trying to run things. She was a small woman. She had a certain smell about her. I don't know if it was that Jean Nate or that Nivea or that powder she used to wear on her face. I don't know what that was, but my mother had a certain smell. Did anybody know their mom have a certain smell? In fact, some of you would be glad if you could smell your mother right now. My mother had a certain way of walking. She was kind of, the old folks call it slew foot. I mean, her feet kind of pointed out like this. But she always worked with her feet pointing out like this, but her walk, Kevin, was purposeful. 
seemed like she was about something, seemed like that perhaps it was her mother, hallelujah, sold into her to stand up straight, pull your head up and your shoulders back. Talk like you got some sense. Act like you got some home training. Today, you could pause and fill in the blanks for your mother or your mother figure. Say it with me, that's my mom. I want to be interactive in my preaching today, and I just want to say that, that my mother has some sayings, and I want to hear if y'all had some too. If, if would somebody just raise your hand and say, my mother would say, won't you say one, please? Help us today. Anybody? Yes. Brother Darden, say it, man. What would your mother say? Let me see your hands if your mama said that to you too. This whooping will hurt me more than it is going to hurt. Yes, please, give us one. You better burn that midnight oil. Let me see the hands of those who have heard that too. Yes, sir, brother, go ahead, man, the blue shirt. That's it, the family that prays together stay. Yes, Jabari. With great, yes, comes great responsibility, so don't squander it. Woo, please, did y'all hear that one? With great gifts comes great responsibility, so don't squander Yes, David. Sit down, shut up, and don't know what you're talking about. Woo! <laughs> Sit down, shut up, you don't know what you're talking about. My, my, David Burwell. Yes. What does that have to do with the price of your tea in China? Yes, brother. My mom always said, try before you cry. Try? Ooh, we. Before you cry. Yes, sister boy. My mother would always say, you don't have to eat a whole cow to know it's what beef. You don't have to to eat a whole cow to know is what? Beef. Beef. All right. Yes, please. I clearly have to listen. Grandma always told me, use your head for something other than a hat rack. Use your head for something other than a hat rack. Yes, Sherry and then Marty. You might do it, but the Lord will let me find out. You might do it, but the Lord will let me find out. Yes, Marty. You better act like you love each other when you leave this house. This is the one that all of us black folk have heard just a minute. Uh, Bill, go ahead and then I'll drop the one that I've got for you. Yes, brother? My mother always says, just keep on living. Time will bring about the change. Just keep on living. Time will bring about a change. Yes, sir, Keith Lee. My mom would always say, I don't care how big you get, I'm still the mom. I don't care how big you get. I see some of you nodding your heads. I'm still your mom. Yes. Ooh, we I like that. If you fall down, make sure you fall down on your back because if you look up, you can get up. I'm going to drop two on you today. This is one that all of us, I, want, I just want to say, I can't put this on all of y'all, but my mother used to say this. Y'all ready? Say ready. Make sure you always have clean underwear on. Because if you get hit by a car, <laughs> not worried about if you got hit by the car, but don't you embarrass me with no dirty drawers on. <laughs> All right, huh? Say it with me, that's my mom. I want to say to somebody today as you're thinking about mothers and motherhood. When I interview people whose mothers have died and I have the privilege of helping them to honor their mother's life, there's a word that comes up and they'll say, my mother was shown up strong. Whatever quotes your mother has made, if she was a woman of faith, she might have said this to you. The Lord will make a way. Somehow. 
So glad today that as I was period, uh, pausing to peruse the pages of God's holy word, that I thought about this woman in the text. Like so many women, she doesn't get the support. She doesn't get the honoring. She doesn't get the recognition that she deserves. She's just called a wife of a fella. We don't get her name. Hmm. We get the prophet Elisha's name, but we don't get this marvelous, wonderful, strong woman's name. But the text says that like so many mothers, she has a situation that she has to deal with. Her husband is dead. She's navigating the world without her husband. And it seems like sisters and brothers, she's come on hard times. How do you know? The text says that the creditors are calling and they're looking to take these two sons of hers as slaves. Say the word slaves. That must have been a terrible situation, brothers and sisters, but I pause today to honor mothers and motherhood today and declare that's my mom because my mom and your moms and moms here today, I want to give some words to start with R. I want us to pay attention to this word, resilience. Say the word resilience. That's that word that means we fall down, but we what? Get back up again. This sister right here is in a struggling situation. The, she got more bills than she has money. The situation has gotten so bad that she's got to realize that there's a potential hmm, that her sons that she loves, the sons that she nursed at her breath, the sons that for whom she sacrificed might be taken into slavery. And that reminds me of women who look like you and look like me who had to on the auction block stand and be gawked at and pulled on and picked at. And see, their mothers had to deal with rape and the ugliness of slave owners. And when the baby came forth, many times the babies were taken away. I'm talking about resilience. Say the word resilience. This sister in the text is confronting something awful and ugly, difficult and discouraging, but she is resilient. I want to say thank you to all the mothers today. I want to say thank you to my wife who is mothering beautifully our children because she and countless others of you here today and others of you who are listening, you know how to say, you know what? The last word has not been spoken. I'm going to get up. I'm going to press on. I'm going to dust myself off. And I'm going to move forward believing that better days are ahead. Say with me, resilience. She got a whole lot of expenses, a whole lot of needs, and seemingly not a lot of resources. But I like today, that's my mom, she's resilient. It's another thing I want to think about today, and it might not sound deep and profound, but look what happens. The man of God says, how can I help you? He says, what do you have in the house? She said, you know, I don't have anything except a little oil. This is not an R word, but I just want to say this to somebody. Wherever you are in your journey, and maybe you're a mother or not today, but let me just say this. Y'all ready? Use whatever you have. Can you say amen? amen. amen. Yeah, yeah. Use the resources that you have. This is what the man of God says. He says, go around and ask your neighbors for their empty jars. And don't just ask for a few. Go around and ask your neighbors for some empty jars. Don't, don't ask for a few. Don't limit what I'm getting ready. <laughs> don't limit what I'm getting ready to do. Go around and ask your neighbors. I want to pause today and say, that's my mom. Say it with me. That's my mom. My mom had resilience, Sherry, but my mom also had, so this is the second R word. Y'all ready? Here it is. She had some wonderful relationships. Say it with me. Say it again, please. 
And that's why I want to pause today and pay attention. She obviously had relationships with the folk in her community context that if they could go knock on the door, say, hey, Sally, hey, Margaret, hey, Betty, hey, Betty, Boo, whatever your name is. <laughs> you got some pots around there? Say it with me, relationships. I want to pause and thank God for some moms today that understand resilience and understand how to love another sister in such a way that there's a beautiful relationship. Say it with me. I want to honor women who are not trying to compete with one another and not trying to say bad things about one another, but to say, I love you, you my sister, and we're going to journey forward together. Say it with me, relationships, huh? I'm glad today that as I think about my mom, I think about Sister McGee, and the two of them journeyed together as friends, but she wasn't. Uh, Mrs. McGee, she was Aunt Mary, or talk to me now. Y'all know what I'm talking about, huh? Well, your mom's friends weren't their blood aunts, but you called them aunt so-and-so. Why? Because of, say it with me, relationship. Amen. Shouldn't we celebrate that? Yeah. I say, shouldn't we celebrate a sisterly kind of love today? Couldn't, shouldn't we celebrate women who would help one another, hey, women who would, listen, I'm going to remember at my house, my mom used to go to Fedco, y'all remember? <laughs> and they had this box of a uh, hamburger patty, looked like flat hockey pucks. <laughs> and my mother would buy the whole box and they'd be sitting in the freezer, Jay, and, and we'd take the little knife and, 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 and get one. But the, but the issue was the reason why my mother bought the whole box is because, guess what? In our house, because of relationships, nobody went hungry. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? So if I got the knife out and hit that joker and got one of them pepper patties and put the salt and pepper and the garlic salt on there, I needed to make sure that I had enough to cook for Tony and Claudius and all the fellas, Keith and Mark and Jay and anybody else. We might have 10 hamburgers, but because of relationships, my mother made sure that there was love, enough love. Talk to me now for everybody. Can you say amen? amen. And let's look back on our history as black folk, beautiful black folk who we somehow God made a way to make food. How many have had mothers and mothers figures who took somebody else's children in? Amen. Am I right about this here? Huh? She knew what was going on down in Sister Johnson's house. She had relationships. Made sure that somebody's child was blessed. That's why on Mother's Day I try to always remember mothering alongside of motherhood because relationship says I might not have birthed you but I'm sure going to be a part of your blessing. Amen. Church, amen. amen. Resilience and relationships. I like the story. I'm going to hurry on. But there's a third R word. So what the story says is that they went and they got the pots and, and somehow, miraculously, huh, that little bit of oil, because of a miracle, God stretched it, huh? I see some of you nodding your heads. Did your mother know how to stretch stuff? Oh, come on now. Huh? Stretch, work it out. I don't have a testimony of growing up struggling. My parents made my life real easy. But I know a whole lot of people whose mothers knew how to stretch, amen. <laughs> knew how to navigate the difficulties, knew how to press past the winds of resistance and difficulty and make a way out of no way. Say it with me, stretch. 
God somehow worked that thing out. And so every time she got to pouring, there was enough oil. Hallelujah. And I feel like talking about God today, huh? How many know that whenever the situation is bad, you always got a hope in the Lord? Can you say amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. This woman did what God told her to do. She was resilient. She leaned upon her relationships. But I like this third word. Is she just had a resolve. Say it with me. Resolve. Say it again, please. Resolve. Huh? She was resolute. She had resolved that no matter what, I'm going to somehow, somehow. Look after what I'm responsible for, what I'm responsible. I have resolved to bless. As for me and my house, we're going to be blessed because of God. Amen. She resolved to do whatever it took to ensure. Because those boys didn't get sold into slavery. Amen. I'm thinking about my mother today. I honor my wife who's been a wonderful and excellent mother. And both of our moms have gone on. Both of them were resilient. Both of them had great relationships. And both of them resolved that no matter what, I'm never going to stop loving and providing for my children. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Resolve. No matter what, I'm going to love mine. No matter what, I'm going to take care of mine. That resolve makes me think of these two words, they're mission-minded. No matter the circumstances, the mission is clear. I'm going to take care of mine. That's my mom and that's your mom too. I'm going to take care of mine. Every person who's done some mothering has had some joys and some pains. My testimony is that I came from a great family, had a wonderful father and a wonderful mother. I had every reason to be successful. I didn't struggle. They made opportunities for me that were extraordinary, but I was hard-headed. And I wanted the hustler's life. Don't act like y'all so holy up in here. <laughs> I admired the hustlers with their tailor-made pants and their feel of sweatsuits. Amen. Kevin, amen. Kevin was one of them good-looking, very successful young men. But he wasn't a hustler. But I got into some trouble trying to be like the hustlers. I was 17 years old, and I got into some trouble that, in, that included me having to go to the jailhouse rock for a night. It wasn't no fun. And the most difficult thing that I had to do was to stand in front of my father and my mother and acknowledge my foolishness at 17. And I can just imagine my mother saying, of all that I've done for you, you out here breaking the law and bringing shame to our name of all that I've done for you. You should have seen the look in her eyes, Mr. Jackson. I could see it now, he's standing in the living room. I'm shaking like a leaf, telling my mother what stupid thing I did. We had a gun in the car. And that meant that it could have been worse, amen. 
But my mother resolved that she was going to love me through it all. And God is so good that he's let some of you mothers here today see your children go deep down in the valley, but come back up again. So my mother did get to see me get myself together and graduate from college. Education was important in our family. She did get to see me do some things that are commendable. I want to say to a mother here today, I want to commend you for being resolute. Amen. Because when things don't go right, all the days haven't come in yet. Just hold on. Be mission-minded. And just like God blessed the woman in the text, you can be blessed too. Let's clap our hands for the goodness of God. Amen. Let the people say amen. Amen. Would you stand all over the church, please? Said that moms are resolute, they resolve, amen. That no matter what, I'm going to hang on in there. Can you say amen? amen? Those of you that are moms and mothering, there's a whole lot of emotions today. I said it. I'm going to say a word to somebody that had a child and that child has preceded you in death. You had to walk that painful path. You had to cry those salty tears. But I want to commend you that while your child was alive, I want to believe that you were resilient. You depended upon your relationship and you resolved, I'm going to love my kids. Am I right about it? See you nodding your head. I'm so glad that we can think today. We can think and think. Are you here and you would say, James, uh, Brother Pastor, I. I'm broken, I'm undone. I feel like I wanna get closer to the God that made me. If that's you, would you come down here that I might pray with you please and others? You may be seated. Just one of the things that you know is, is the time to do this. Listen, well, I, I, I see you. I, I, uh, I feel like I need God in a way that I don't. If that's you, we want to pray with you. Why don't you just come on? How about, this is the day, I think I want to journey with this group. This is a nice group. I want to, I want to be a part of the church. I know it's not perfect, but I think I want to be a part of this. Is that anybody's testimony? Would you just come on down that we could clap and celebrate that? That would be wonderful. glad that we could be together. Anybody get anything today? Anybody learn something today? Just a few hands. All right. Well, we keep on trying. We'll try again next week. To God be the glory. Just because you're Christian don't mean you don't have some problems. Just because you got a title or you know how to dress up don't mean that you're not broken. We all need God, amen. 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 That's my test. Some people feel like they can go without him. I heard a fellow recently, I was talking with him and he gone back to medical school and he said he had grown up in the church and he had 
when he went to school and started studying sciences and all that, he said that he, he, he not down with God anymore. It used to be a time when I would want to go toe to toe with people like that and argue with them and tell them all about it. I don't do that no more. You know why? Because if you just keep living, you're going to call him again. You hear me now? You won't be calling on the science book when your mama dies. You ain't doing that. You know you need God. Don't let a preacher like me with problems. Don't let no mean and messy church folk keep you from loving and serving God. Amen. Because guess what? The pastor not going to be there when you stand before God. That mean brother in the church with his cranky self. That messy sister in the church. They, they ain't going to be there. It's going to be you and God. Amen. And you'll be glad you know Jesus at that time. It's not a threat, but it is an admonition. Thank you so much. Let's get ready to give today, and then we're going to have a beautiful program. I know it's been a little long, and I wasn't intending to preach that hard, but thank you for listening and participating today. Thank you. I use an app on my phone called Giflify. It allows me to um, press some buttons. It's connected to my checking account. And so what I do is I look at how much money, because my money is variable. And so I just look at that and say, oh, okay, well, what's 10% of that? And then I push the button. And then generally I just round it up. Um, so please give that we can continue. For some, it's about your commitment to God. For some, you all are business people. You come here and the lights are on and the music is being played. and. Bathroom's got toilet paper in there, amen. All that costs money. You, you forget? Uh, all that costs money, just like it's your house. So if you're going to be party to some of the benefits, would you please be party to some of the sacrifice? Let's pray. God, thank you. Bless us, please, as we hear a little music again. And be blessed as we give. Let's do something else. We're blessed in the city, in the fields. We're blessed when we come.
Let us pray. Father God, thank you for the resilience of these worshipers. Thank you for those who gave. Please let us continue to serve you the way that we have been trained to do, the way that we have promised to do. In the name of your son, Jesus, amen. Amen. Anybody joining us for the first time we asked before, but we had some folks come in a little later. Anybody, we just want to celebrate you. Anybody want to? No pressure to do it, but if you're here the first time, all right, everybody's been here before. Or anybody feels like standing, that's cool too. All right. We're gonna do what is part of the tradition of a church. We're gonna honor mothers in a, in a formal way. And I'm so grateful uh, Sister Jean is here. Uh, she's up, up on 90 years old and just as wonderful as she could be. And uh, let's clap our hands for our sister Jean. Yes. Everybody knows how old I am. Good morning, church family. God has charged us to always honor our father and mother. However, the second Sunday in May has always been set aside for us to honor, celebrate, and recognize our moms. So, we have some tokens for all of our moms and some special uh, surprises for some of our other moms, like great grandmas. Do we have any great grandmas? If so, please stand. Woo! Great grandma. Okay. How many uh, great grandchildren or how many children and grandchildren do you have? Six. Great grandchildren? Five great Oh my gosh, and how about you? Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, we will have a special bag like this for you. For the great grandmas. Yeah, for the great grandmas. Great grandmas, you came up. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay, and uh, how about grandmas? How many grandmas do we have? Will you stand? And how about godmothers? Any godmothers in the house? Okay. All right, and now I'd like all moms to stand. All of our moms. Okay, so whether you are a mom, a godmom, a grandmom, or a great-grandma, we have something for you, and they're going to be passed out. And this is what it says. There's a Bible verse from Proverbs on the back, 
and on the front it says, Mother, Mother, however I measure, it's always my pleasure to call you my treasure. Happy Mother's Day. And you're going to get a little measuring tape. So will you pass those out for us? Okay, all moms, god moms, great grandmas, grandmas. Okay, these young men are going to pass out for you. Just raise your hand and they'll get it to you. Thanks. Thank you. All moms, grandmas, god moms, great grandmas, raise your hand. Get your tape measure and your special keepsake card. Uh, Laura and I work together and we come up with what this looks like on both sides Amen. and we have these printed up especially for you. Amen. Did everyone? Okay. Thank you. And let's see the grandmas again stand up. Just grandmas. Amen. Okay, God bless you. All right, thank you. I'm hearing you that. I know, but I don't know if I have enough. No, the rest of the prize, the youngest mother. Oh, I'm, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, um, Laura's helping me remember. Uh, <laughs> do we have a new mom, uh, the newest mom who has a, a baby? Any new moms and who had a baby this past year? Any new moms? Okay, the youngest mom. Do we have a mom in the house who's under 25? Under 30? Any moms under 30? Any mom under 35? Any mom under 40? <laughs> okay, then. Any mom under 45? Oh my, okay. We're having a hard time coming up with a really young mom. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to grandmoms. Okay, how many, well, uh, you have a grandmom that has um, five children? Five grandchildren? Five grandchildren? Yes. Okay, Ms. Oa, uh, Ms. Oa, you were my grandma. Yeah, you, you were a uh, great grandma. Do we have any other uh, grandmas with five or more grandchildren? Okay, stand up if you have four or more grandchildren. Stand up. Four? Grandchildren, okay. <laughs> okay, go back there. Ashley, you want to take that? We have time. No. no. Oh, okay. Do we have more than one? Yes, we do. So okay. we have those two there. Who is Mary? One for Lola and one for Mary. And do we have a mom that, that has come more than 20 miles to church today? <laughs> the mom who came the furthest.
What? Okay, we're not sure. You have to be here. We're not going to say. Okay. Okay. Okay, and the last one for, here for Stani. Thank you, Ashley, for helping us pass out. Anyway, all moms, happy Mother's Day. Come on, let's give Jean Wilson a great big hand, won't you? This is wonderful. I certainly want to take a moment to thank Sister Lurie Daniels Ball, Sister Jean Wilson. Uh, Jean and I, uh, I learned that Jean had a creative idea uh, with respect to the, the gift that all of the mothers uh, got today. And she gave it to Lura, and the two of them were able to print that up so that everybody could uh, receive a blessing today. Uh, thank you so very much. We held church a little longer than normal. And I know that this is a day that has a lot of feelings. Thank all of you for being here today. And uh, we're getting ready to, um, to close. Next week is going to be a big week. I'm going to celebrate um, graduations. We're going to celebrate birthdays in May. Um, and uh, it's, it's my birthday, too, so... Uh, going to do all that together. So it's going to be graduations, May birthdays, and the pastor's birthday. Amen. So we thank God for those who are working on that. It's going to be real nice. And uh, thank you so very much. Look at our fine young people over there. Let's clap for them. We're glad Sister Marcella is the teacher today. Happy about Let's all stand if we're able, please. I wanna, um, I just wanna thank Jean and Lura. I was sitting there and I was thinking about, again, that broad range of emotions on Mother's Day. And the way that was done, it was so loving to be inclusive of, of women who have been mothering others. I thought that was nice. Amen. Our society, there's still, you know, some, some old stuff that, that can be hurtful. Amen. Amen. I thought you all did a marvelous job. Thank you. get ready to go today. Maybe today is the day that you just be extra nice to somebody. Right? Let's just be extra nice. Sister Roche, who you got there between you? You're between two wonderful women. Who are those women that are to your left and right? Yeah, you got both of your blessings. Good to see you, Shelly. We thank God for moms like that who got an extra special gift today. I called some of your names and I want to thank God for all of you. And uh, let's get ready to go. Yes, uh, and we have one more announcement. Thank you for your patience. Brother Ashley has something to share. Thank you. Just very quickly, I know you've seen me with this bare face and I wanted to explain myself just quickly. This uh, coming weekend and going through June, we are opening Twitter Dot at LA Opera, and I'll be singing as the Emperor. It's a fabulous show. The singing is amazing. Puccini's music is fantastic. It's the first time in 30 years that it's been in LA or in Southern California. It is an important piece, and Russell Thomas, the black tenor of all time, he's amazing, is singing the lead. Angela Mead is the soprano, and I am the Emperor. Come see Twitter Dot at LA Opera. Beautiful. How long is it running? It's going through June 8th, 8th, but it opens May 18th. 
running through June 8th and you'll be able to see our brother there with his clean face not when, 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 when you get when you see him you always say that's my brother right there you might not but you'll know that beautiful voice thank you so much anybody have any prayer requests that haven't been addressed very good is Earl here today he's our brother that had a diagnosis recently Let's pray. God, thank you for the blessings of this day. We honor, oh God, the memory of moms and to celebrate the, the, the wonder of moms that are with us. We thank you, God, for their resilience. We thank you for the sweetness of their relationships. And we thank you that they resolved to be mission-minded, never to give up on us. We rejoice, God. <coughs> Excuse me. We rejoice, God. And we thank you. May our rest of our day be beautiful here in the city of angels. Now unto him that's able to keep us from falling, present us faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, now and forevermore. Amen. Why don't you greet somebody? Tell them it was nice to be with you today.